Hey there, Dengas here. Today's video is going to be on finishing up wiring the electrics on my boat, the Green Machine. When I say finishing the electrics, I mean more, I guess, from a, a tutorial point of view in that I'm going to put the stern light in today and that'll give us an example of running a device from the back to the front and having it wired to its own switch rather than having a built-in switch the way that cabin light had. Because this is the last wire I'm going to be running from the back of the boat, it also means that I can sort of put everything in conduit finally and finish it all up and sort of just show how I go about doing that. The rest of the things I wire will just be all at the front of the boat, nice and close to the terminal block, so they'll just be a sort of extension of the theme, I guess. Now, at one stage I was toying with the idea for this stern light of having a earth straight to the battery and then using that spare single core cable I had to get the positive power to the light. I've decided not to do that. I think I'll use that spare wire as a fuel tank level sensor down the track. So I'm actually going to run another twin core wire down for this light. I also think it keeps it conceptually neater. All the wiring comes to that positive negative terminal. It's easy to trace, you know what's going on, less joins in the wires, less single wires going places, less ring connectors onto the battery. I think it's always nice if that's kept really clean. So I'm going to start by just soldering the socket base for the stern light onto a long wire. Then I'll take this over and fit it and we'll do the rest in the boat. Nothing particularly special going on here, just the same technique I've used in part one for joining wires to wires, just solder and heat shrink. One thing I will show quickly though that I forgot to record when I was doing the bilge pump was this technique of just having a couple of layers of the uh, heat shrink tube. So I've soldered these two connections now and I'll push the tube up the single tubes over each wire. Just shrink those down. And then once they're done, I've also got a larger tube that I just had over the, the whole lot. And then I'll run that down as well. Let's go install this in the boat. Just going to feed all this wire through. I just find it easier to solder on the bench and do this than it is to solder in place sometimes. While I'm here, I'm just going to put some fasteners and lock this down. Next, I'm going to route this wire up to the front of the boat. The trick here is just to be careful to keep it parallel with all the other wires. If you accidentally take a turn around something else, like in this case control cables or whatever, I'm not going to be able to put them all into the same conduit later on. So just be careful that all the wires take the same route up to the front of the boat so that down the track they can be grouped together easily. Although this is a simple circuit, I'll go through it on the board quickly because it's really representative of adding individual items onto the, the backbone of the electrics of the boat. In this case, the device we're sort of adding is this stern light. So I've got the stern light socket mounted, two wires running from it, running up to the front. The negative is going to go straight to the negative terminal block at the front of the boat. The positive here is going to come to a switch and then from the switch we're going to the positive on the stern light bracket. So this simple circuit is what we would use if we were adding any device that we wanted to switch that didn't have a built-in switch. So the next thing I'm going to do is run up here and I'll show you the switch I'm installing and we'll connect this and then we'll just connect the earth straight up. The switch I've got here is a waterproof switch. It's a nice sort of completely sealed rubber unit, the whole head of it. I got that from JCAR for about $12. Now I've soldered a little tail onto it, long enough to reach the positive terminal block that I've got under the dash. On the other side of it, I've just put a soft, uh, low temperature solder heat shrink tube on it. And I'm going to use a heat gun just to attach that to the, one of the wires coming from the stern light itself. Then the other wire from the stern light 
is going to go straight to the negative terminal lock under the dash. And once we've done that, it should be in action. I've got my switch here now, and I've got the short wire and the long wire. The long wire is going to the terminal block. The short one I'm going to connect to the positive coming from the back of the boat. So I'm just going to slip this low temperature solder connector on. I'm happy to use one of these connectors in this circumstance because it's quite protected under the bow of the boat, under the dash anyway. So it doesn't get exposed to as much moisture and rain and all that kind of thing. So I'll just give them a bit of a twist. And then pull the connector up. And then just hit that with the heat gun. The heat shrink tube closes up pretty quickly on these, but it takes a little while for the solder itself to melt. So make sure you heat them long enough to melt that solder. Now I've got my switch attached like this. All I need to do is attach this wire to the negative terminal block, this wire to the positive terminal block, and we're ready to go. Here are those two terminal blocks I was talking about. So I'm just gonna unscrew, poke the wire in, tighten it up, then unscrew and tighten up the negative here and then I'll come back around to the dash side. Those two wires are now connected to the two terminal blocks. Then all I'm going to do is feed it through the dash here. These then have these little waterproof covers that go on the switch and they've also got a little brass connector in the back that's the nut that holds them on. So now we've got our switch in the dash, two leads to the terminal blocks and the rest of the wires coming down to this socket at the back. So I'll put the light in and we'll give it a test. The stern light I'm using is one of these uh, Perco made in the US brands. And there's a little bit of a trick to it. It comes with a couple of different adapters depending on what your base is. The base I have is non-threaded, so I'm using this particular adapter and I need to get these other ones off. There's a couple of screws in the bottom that hold the connector in. I'm actually gonna take both of them out so that I can slide the unneeded adapter off. But the base doesn't require you to have both screws. So what you need to do, they supply a little silver cover like this. I'm gonna put that cover over where the other screw was and then it'll slot in. So just covering up the old screw hole and then we should be good to go. Now I've just got the cover, single screw. Slot in and down. So that seems to be working quite nicely. Now I'm going to start neatening up the wires a little bit and I'll finalise the battery box, all that kind of stuff. Here's what I'm thinking with regards to mounting the battery. I originally had it right in the stern there against the transom, but that's actually a really good place for me to keep my anchor. We mostly anchor boats from the stern on the river because you'll tie to a wharf or something, you'll tie a bow line to the wharf and throw an anchor off the back and just hold it from going under the wharf. It's not as common to anchor from the bow like you would if you were fishing or going for a dive or whatever. So it's nice to have that space to put the anchor. The bilge pump is on the port side and I don't want it anywhere near that because it's likely to damage it. So I think I'll keep this starboard quarter as somewhere to keep the anchor. So what I've done is I've run the battery leads under the back seat. So I've got the main battery leads for the starter motor and then the positive and negative for all our accessories. So I've got those running under the seat. I've also got this little kit, which includes two plastic loops, a few stainless screws, and a battery strap. So I'm gonna install those on the timber deck. That's the other advantage of here, is I've got a timber deck. I don't, it's just the hull down there, so I can't screw into it. So I'll screw these two fittings into the deck and that'll let me secure the battery box to the deck using the strap. The other advantage to putting it here is that I'm just bringing weight a little bit forward. You've already got the weight of the outboard hanging over the transom. I always figure any weight you can bring forward's better. So here we are now. Two saddles screwed into the timber deck and the strap through them. Battery box fits in between the two saddles. Battery's in the box now with the two sets of wires attached. Now I'm just gonna give these terminals a bit of a spray with a 
battery terminal protector just to stop them corroding. All right, they're coated now. What I'm also gonna do is just tuck some of this excess wire and this fuse holder inside the battery box to protect it a little bit. Now the trick with these battery strap buckles, if I can show you one-handed, hopefully, is to come up here between the serrated part and the plate. There we go. Pull it as tight as you can. Back that way. And then just tuck under here on the opposite side. And that won't come undone. The final step of this job is that I'm going to start protecting these wires in a conduit. This conduit's plastic and it's split along its length, so it's nice and easy to feed the wires in. I'm going to start right here with a single wire at the stern line and then start to pick up more wires as they collect because you can sort of come out at any point through the slit in it. So I'll start with just a single wire and just slowly feed them in. Now I've got here to the bilge pump, I'll just start picking up these extra bilge pump wires. And this here is the finished product now. Got the conduit coming from the stern light, bilge pump wires are joining it here. I've got a cable tie around the conduit, then another cable tie through that one, just keeping it up out of the water. And then from here on, I cable tie it to the steering cable. I could have used uh, a huge conduit and put everything inside, but personally I find that a bit of a maintenance headache down the track. I like to have all these accessory wires protected because they're quite delicate, but I'm happy for the control cables, the wiring loom for the outboard and the steering cable to be separate so I don't have to pull everything apart in order to change one of them. As it comes up the front here, comes through the dash and this conduit just stops the wires chafing against here. Up underneath I've also got all the wires just cable tied up. In occasional places there's holes in the metal and so I just run a cable tie through, bundle the wires and keep them up together. So that pretty much wraps up this video. I will be adding a few more electrical things, the docking lights and the side navigation lights as well. But I think, I hope these two videos give you an idea of just how to set the boat up so it's now easy to go and add those extra things down the track. I'm pretty confident this setup's gonna last a while as well. Right from the battery, we got the, the battery inside a battery box to protect it. The box is strapped down, the terminals are coated, all the connections are soldered, then all the wires are protected inside a conduit up to the dash, and it's all kept neat by those terminal blocks under the dash. So I, I'm a big fan of this setup. If you were to make any improvements on this, I definitely think fusing every single circuit is not a bad way to go, and you can buy some good units that have that all kind of wired for you, a terminal block with fuse holders. So if you do want to fuse into individual circuits, then I recommend going that way. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. See ya.